I really like New York because it's always a melting pot. It's always got people from all over the place who have no business being here, but they're here anyway and they're contributing to society. And I love that. So I'm just psyched to be a part of that. Sometimes you got to go away to appreciate it, but that's, that's cool. I'm higher than an astronaut Getting chased, dog, I'm running after cops I got a half a nice stash, blast past the top Talk getting hot, and your ass getting shot I bust the roaster off Y'all the fake type of pimps, they need a long broom Just to brush your shoulders off Oh, uh, you got Tough City Tattoos I'm a general manager around here I got an assistant, Puma Tough City Tattoos has been on like about 12 years now, you know Founded and created by Med Basically, Tough City Styles comprises everything we do from the record label, entertainment company, to the tattooing, to uh, the video production, audio production. Uh, I write Seth's one. Uh, I started writing graffiti in 1983. Uh, really, I got into tattooing through Med, who is the owner here of Tough City. This is a, uh, a whole sleeve I did a few weeks ago. Uh, it actually says Leonardo. It was up to me, I do graffiti all the time, make a living from that. but. Not everybody loves it as much as I do. Mm -hmm. Thus, I end up doing uh, Panthers and Roses. The foundation of, of our tattoo business and sets it apart from other tattoo shops is all of our background comes from graffiti. Yeah, but we flame torch it up. Yeah. Tough City Styles, Puma, get in here. Uh, this right here is the in-house producer for us, Crispy Crunch Puma. Right here, I'm Nighttime. Russ Diamond. 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 Russ Diamond, Show Cal. We got Verbal Revolt, yeah. Bentley, Blade yeah. Brown, and Promise. And that's, that makes Flame Torch Tough City Styles right there. We've been, we've been riding together for about two years, but certain members are newer than others, but we all grew up together. We all, we basically will make a rap. We will tattoo you down, do the music, and make your music videos, man. We do it all. Stand up, son is hitting the deck. I live life like Nike and keep him in check. And you making me sweat. This ain't even a problem. Me writing your rhymes. That ain't even a job. What you mean with your odds, man? I'm even sleeping. Only one problem, y'all ain't even breathing. Earth when the fire seeing what's the reason? Now niggas close your eyes, cause it's blackout season. <laughs> We're all different, just in case you don't see, we're, we're, we're all different. We got love for the backpackers, for the bullingers, for the ballers, for the haters, for the skateboarders. For every, we got love for everybody, everybody, because we all different. As long as we got, yeah, exactly, it's all about the respect. Respect leads to love, that's all that. New York sucks in the winter, dude. You get to a spot and like, you're all psyched to skate it and you can't because there's snow there. And then there's like one warm day and you're like, yeah, it's warm, it's 45 degrees. That's not warm. People in the rest of the world don't think 45 degrees is warm. It sucks, dude. Every time you fall, it hurts. <laughs> I mean, regardless, it hurts. But every time you it's like 10 times the pain. The bushings freeze up, your trucks don't move, like, all the odds are against you like by like 10,000 times. One place in New York that, that I would love to skate if it was legal would probably be Midtown. Um, just the fact that, you know, nobody would bother you anymore. You could skate whenever, uh, you know. But then again, I guess it really wouldn't be fun because, you know, you don't get chased. And that's the whole ambience about, you know, Midtown is like you got to go at night. And at night, it's, I guess, the most the most prettiest, you know, you got all the lights and stuff, and also getting chased is kind of fun, your heart's pumping and shit, you know, it also makes it better for the next day to go and attack. New York is like, it's like a big playground, and you gotta make what you got of it, you know what I mean? I think the craziest thing I've seen that just freaked me out was some guy passed out on the floor and everybody would just walk and pass. Really, everything makes a city, you know? This is what makes New York, New York. The grime and the dirt, you gotta just deal with it and go with it, you know? 
right off of Noble Street in Greenpoint. And you go out in this huge corridor. 100, 100 yards long, looks like something out of a horror movie. Just raw, rusted steel. You look down at the ground, it's just beautiful. Then you look up and you see like 60 feet ceilings, just rawness. It's just amazing. The idea came up about uh, three years, two or three years ago. We were just gonna build a mini ramp in like a small, like a 400 square foot studio. It just kind of blossomed into, like over a couple, over the course of a couple years, just kind of blossomed into this project. Even once we figured out that we're gonna, that we were gonna have like uh, something big there, um, we weren't sure what, but we knew we were gonna. There were so many people interested in it that we knew we could make something big. We were only looking for like a, a 2,000 square foot space, and we ended up with 6,000 square feet. The builders, the main builders in the project, um, myself, Pat was there the whole time. Rob Erickson, Seth Roscoe, our, our friend Tim Vandervoss. He, he uh, I call him Tim Vander. I'm never sure of the complete pronunciation of that. I'm Chuck one of the key masters. Key masters. <laughs> <laughs> I keep, I'm control of the, I'm in control of the key holders. You know, it's a co-op, everybody chips in their money and their time and keeps it going. We kind of started planning out a bunch of different shit. We just started building, otherwise it wouldn't have gotten done. So. And we just kind of built it like we didn't know what we were, you know, what we were going to do when we, uh, when we got there. We just kind of have this big empty room and we're like, what are we going to build in here? We just kind of winged it, like we started at the vert wall, because we knew we knew that we wanted that. And so then, by the time we were building it, we had 15 people that already wanted to be in, and were set to be in on it. By the time it opened, we had 20 people, and we only let 10 other keys go after that. You know, it's kind of a tough thing because it's like you want to know the people that are in there because it's a completely, it's you know, you get a key and you're in control of the space. So it's like you just don't want to give any any guy that walks in like a key. It's not for like you know, for reasons like you know elitist reasons. It's just like we're responsible for this place, and you know, this is how we have to keep it open. You know, it's a beautiful city, man. It's a really great city. The alleys are beautiful. It's beautiful at night. The nice thing about winter is you've got an extra hours of darkness to kind of walk around and look at stuff. And, uh, you know, so I'm always out there. I'm not doing anything out there, I swear. But I'm out there all the time. New York in general gets to be a real interesting town the later it gets. Like somewhere between four and six in the morning. It gets, it gets really interesting. The first time I came to New York, I saw a, a burned out police car on East Houston Street, like around, I don't know, around the FDR. That was like my first introduction to New York. And it's just been, it's been downhill ever since. It's been so much nicer and quiet. It drives me crazy about New York is the people that have been here long enough that they've gone from being rebels to being like your worst re Republican mothers that you've ever seen. That drives me crazy. People that forgot what it was like to be young in this town, that walk around here like they own it, like they're telling you, they, they expect there to be no signs and no awnings and you know no visual information whatsoever. They had fun in the 70s and it's no, nobody can have fun now in you know 2004. That drives me crazy, that's insane.
people just turning their backs on their youth and the fun they had to try and ruin everybody else's fun. That's retarded. People need to smoke in bars, they need to drink on the streets, we need to have, you know, legalized gambling. We need whatever it takes to make the city fun again. The city's not fun anymore, it drives me crazy. You know, the city's just become a place to work and sleep. Yeah, I'll, I'm telling you, I'll run this city right back into the ground if you give me the chance. <laughs> Vote for me, man. We'll be bankrupt in no time. You know, it was like the last run of the Q train. You know, I've heard of it before. They used to have like big train parties, like every so often in the early 90s. So I'm like, hey, you know what? Why don't I go check it out? Train pulls up and there's like, everybody just jumps into the last two cars. Like, people are just piled up on each other. Like, you know, we have, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I came back with battle scars. On the train, it was just, it was like mayhem. It was just a good time. You, you had all these like, just normal people on the train coming from work. Like, you know, a lot of like foreigners had no idea what was going on. The best part was, was at every stop, you would just get off and switch cars and, you know, everybody was just having a good time. You know, people were just getting drunk. A few people just got on top of each other, started crowd surfing. It was a, a mixed group of people, but it was a good time, you know? the first time people got just let loose, you know, and uh, I, I, I would do it again if I could. You know, have friends and everything, but, but don't really have that family vibe, and I think that skateboarding in New York City is like such a family. You are at KCDC Skate Shop in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. I'm Amy Gunther. I am Nevin Steele. That's why we have the ramp, that's why we have the gallery. Help skating, help push the scene along in New York City. It's not just you know big companies selling product that push skateboarding along. It it's actually the the rider. It's actually the artist that designs it. It's actually the the tiny little guy starting from scratch, starting from zero with this small company. That's what keeps it interesting. And those are all the good positive things about skateboarding. Uh, well, Mountain. Mountain Dew through it, <coughs> and um, you know, Five Borough was involved. A lot of people were involved in the project. Mm -hmm. That was one of the best events we've ever had. I think just like the energy level in here was incredible. Like it was so fun, and just watching everyone just give like 110 percent. Like every trick was insane. Like, 
Yeah, we ended up having to a flat ground contest too. Contest in the middle of the store. As soon as Vinnie Rafa showed up, and threw down a hundred bucks, it was on, and then <laughs> the whole thing was just a lot of positive energy and a lot of fun. And it's such a family vibe. Like everyone's so supportive of each other. There's no one's really competing. It's all about everybody's cheering on everybody else, who's and just amping up that guy to do better and better and better, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah everybody was getting excited. Steve Rodriguez with the bull oh, horn. Steve oh, Oh my hilarious. gosh. You can't, you can't stop him. You don't want to stop him. You know, yeah. Tato got in that little, uh, like it's like a bucket you put ice in or something, and he just started hopping around in it, oh screaming. God. Was making so much noise, but like, no one cared. It was, it was awesome. It just made everybody skate harder, skate better.